YouTube, what is going on guys? Thank you guys for checking out another video of mine. Today we're going to be reacting to Alpha M one more time, man, because apparently he breaks down all the information that we were kind of wondering about while we watched his tour of his amazing new business venture with Salam poster jack crack from the comment section appreciate you he let us know that alpha m actually has a business channel where he vlogs in and pretty much tells us the vision of his business not just that but i haven't watched it yet i believe the daily operations and the costs and stuff like that i hope he shares that information that's some great information a lot of entrepreneurs don't share that type of stuff so we're gonna check it out i did skip the first portion of it which was like a brief tour of the salon and we're gonna go right into the story behind salon poster and hopefully the business side of it let's watch it together i'll try to offer you guys some perspective as some of you guys may know i do own barbershops i had seven barbershops in the tampa area because of the pandemic we're down to five now i also own and operate a successful product line in the barber industry besides that guys sorry about the camera quality obviously i'm traveling i'm on vacation i'm using my home setup and and if you're interested in learning about my home setup, I will share all the details in my next vlog, which I'm gonna release tomorrow. So look out for that. Let's go ahead and watch this video. All right, so where to begin and how to not make this story like... Did I say home or travel setup? This is my travel setup. My home setup is nice. 45 minutes long. All right, so as you guys know, I have known Steven for many years. 2013, he was the one who actually gave me the phone number to the lab that I ended up calling and, and, and starting Pete and Pedro with. And over the years, I've just kind of been like a silent observer of his business. As you guys know, he used to own Dyer and Post a Salon. About three years ago, he and I were talking and he sort of gave me the impression that he was not 100% happy. At the time they started, it was a great situation, but as you know, people grow and as people evolve, it started not being a great situation. And so about three years ago, I actually just said to him, I go, you know, if you ever decide you want to, you know, go out on your own and want somebody to be like your partner, you know, I'd be happy to do it because A, I knew what salons can do and I just, I like the industry. And plus I, I'm rooting for Steven. I think he's an amazing guy. He's an incredibly talented stylist. You know, anytime you can align yourself with smart people that are great at what they do, I think it's it's a it's not necessarily the worst decision. And so That's anyway, good. three years ago, I sort of, and he said, well, we should talk. So then about two years ago, he came to me and he's like, um, were you serious about actually wanting to do this? And I said, yeah, but I was excited. I was like, yeah, you know, this sounds cool. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that A, I don't want really like anything to do with it. I don't want to run it. I don't want to operate it. I want like nothing. I just like want it. to basically be able to, you know, use my, my extra money and, and diversify your, myself your and, and well. let him do his thing. Then I started thinking a little bit harder and um, I run with a gentleman. Um, his name is Tony. Tony and I went to West Virginia University. He is somebody that I run with every Sunday. And so we've been running and, and he is an incredible salesperson. He's never really done like the entrepreneurial thing. Tony also knows Steven. And I was thinking, all right, let me, let me, let me, let me think about this for a second. How can I do this? Because I knew that Tony wanted to be in business or do something else. I knew that he had some extra money. He's been very successful doing what he does. But what if the three of us joined forces and did this together? The other thing I was thinking is that Tony's wife was starting to look for a job. What if she would be one of the managers? We have two managers. We've got Vanessa and then we've got Courtney. Yeah, you can't be the that center. That way, of not only is Tony paying attention to like all the books and handling all like the, the stuff that's not fun or sexy that Steven's like no good at, it also puts Tony's wife in the business on a day-to-day -day, you know, basis, basically. And that's essentially how it happened. Uh, Tony put up half the money. I was originally gonna put up the other half of the money of the money that we thought that we needed in order to open the salon. And so, about a, two years ago, we started looking for a location. And so all of these retail spaces were full. Like, thing, like in all of these like retail, like strip centers, you typically have something in your lease or a clause that says you can't have somebody else competing. in a competing business. So yeah. like one salon, one nail salon. When we'd find one that didn't, typically what happened was we didn't have enough parking. Think about it like this. At salon Posta, we have 28 stations, which means we need 28 stations for the stylists. We also need assistants. They're basically one assistant per two people. So there's another Damn. 14 spaces. <laughs> yeah, a and lot of parking. You've got all the other people, like the 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 managers and the hourly people that are working, the just customers. that are not assisting or 
doing the work. Courtney, Tony's wife, she said, hey guys, there's this vacant, old, rundown, dilapidated church off Marietta Square. Notice guys how all these people that helped him build this business that he's building, he knew them before he knew he wanted to build the business, but they all became great relationships and the perfect individuals to help them get to where he needs to be or where he wants to go. That's a perfect example. And I know it's cliche at this point, everybody says it, of your network being your net worth, man. And you know, the people around you that you surround yourself with is important. And if you have to be the guy who is motivating the people that are around you to become assets. I'm not saying assets for yourself. I'm saying assets for themselves. This needs to become an asset, right? Like it's the biggest asset you can have. It's it's part of why that I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman, right? Like you are an asset. And if you don't invest in yourself, how are you going to become that for yourself and for others? It seems like when you think about the partnerships that he's creating, it's not just money being put in. He says it that he doesn't want to be in the day to day operation. Operations, but between his money that he's going to invest and the huge platform he has, he brings a lot to the table. Like your chances of success have skyrocketed because everybody in town is going to know who you are and people around the world are going to know who you are. I know with my platform, people travel from all over the place to visit our barbershops. So I could just imagine what being in business with him would do for your salon. So he brings that to the table. The other guys are bringing, you know, bookkeeping and, and experience to the table. Man, guys, build relationships in 2021 if we find a space that's you know we think in a good location that would be amazing i would be open to actually buying it and then renting the space to the salon in order to open oh, or run you its smart. business two you weeks smart. later courtney who is tony's McDonald's. wife also <laughs> got a real estate license in the past like you know year was like hey there's there's an old dilapidated rundown church right off of marietta square are you interested in checking it out? I'm like, off the square? The, that that so old rundown building? I'm like, all right. So we met over there and it was, as you guys saw in some of the previous videos, it was an absolute disaster. Cause it's in Marietta, my city that I love, absolutely love. We go over there and the three of us take a look. And um, it was one of those things where we all <laughs> kind of walked in and we knew that it was gonna take, or I knew that it was gonna take just an ungodly amount of work effort and and love so fun fact 2021 goal before i forget one of my goals is to because we've moved to like five different warehouses in 2020 alone one of my goals is to buy warehousing or buy land develop it into warehousing and rent it to 245 so that we can diversify myself and and obviously my partners we can diversify into real estate and still run obviously operate 245 but it's going to be an expense anyways might as well be paying ourselves that money and build our real estate portfolio and so we're learning a lot of things on that journey to try to get the funding to do such a large project you know because when you're doing warehousing you're talking about two three four five six seven ten acres and you're talking about permits you got to pull you're talking about building huge warehousing spaces it's a lot to learn but it's amazing to be able to go through that process because you're going to college you're going to university the type of university you can't go to anywhere else look out for that project man that we're working on i just want to mention it just because he's already done it and like i said it's inspiring for sure that day that we walked in i i said to courtney i said okay i said you guys are serious let's do this and so we made an offer they ended up you know countering i countered back ended up accepting the rest is kind of history before i actually closed on the building we had like a 90 day due diligence because there's a lot of issues with that building and oh, i wanted yeah. to make sure that i wasn't walking into like a sewer toxic waste dump. smart man and smart so guy. the way that it works i am the owner of the building the property i also purchased everything pretty much in the salon so i own and for that i get paid rent every single month i also have have a percentage ownership in the salon business. And so, you know, once a year, we will pay, take like a profit distribution, the owners, the three owners, Tony, Steven, and myself. I like that they commit to once a year, a profit distribution. It's hard to do that when you're trying to build a huge brand. Like for example, T Hanley, I'm sure like he's not taking once a year a profit. He might be on salary because it makes sense tax wise. I'm sure he doesn't want to take any of the profits at the end of the year because he's trying to grow his business. And so if you're taking profits, you're really killing 
scaling, the potential growth, the the snowball effect of your business. Take a salary and then a, maybe a distribution if you need it for tax purposes. But man, a salon's a little bit different. You got the cash flow and stuff coming in. But if you're trying to grow multiple locations, for example, then it might not make sense. Um, it doesn't sound like it. It sounds like you know T Hanley has the potential to be a monster and can by itself can probably make some serious revenues. But uh, yeah, that's just my perspective on that. It has been absolutely better than I dreamed in terms of the finished product, also the reception from all the people coming in. But a salon is one of those businesses that I've always sort of had my eye on. And the other thing about salons, which may shock you, is they can absolutely crush it in terms of revenue. The other upside is that it is, almost, I don't wanna say recession proof, it is not shut down proof because that's one thing that, that Stephen had happened on. Yeah, prepare for that. Was, um, they ended up having to shut down, you know, but barring shutting down and being forced to shut down, salons are typically a pretty recession proof business. I will say this though, I'm more afraid of recessions than I am of pandemics. Think about the last time there was a pandemic before COVID. I've been in this business 10 years and never been shut down from pandemic besides this year so and even before that generations before me weren't shut down because of a pandemic so something to keep in mind i mean it's almost like people that are scared to fly planes because they're afraid that it'll crash but they get in a car every morning it's kind of like that you know anyway guys that is where i'm gonna wrap this long winding meandering story up it is really cool man it is really cool i want to give you guys some extra nuggets i guess kind of break down some of the revenues i was hoping that he would break down kind of the revenues and the opportunities there maybe break out a spreadsheet or something you know i was hoping he would do something like that but he didn't but with some lawns guys I just know a little bit about it because my wife is a stylist. She uh, owns a salon, but her salon is not a commission-based salon. We just wanted to have great people around us and a great working environment. That's why we opened it up. Definitely, most salons operate off of a tiered system. Sometimes you come in almost like an intern, but you're really just shadowing someone who's training you, who's teaching you the ropes. And during that time, you're probably getting paid an hourly wage. As you go in and you become a full stylist, you start at tier one, you're going to be at, on a commission price probably it'll probably be a 50 50 or 60 40 where 60 goes to the salon 50 goes to the salon right and barbers are probably hearing this and they're thinking oh my gosh no way but i mean think about it that's how you can build a business that has managers that has people at washing hair for you that has a marketing team that has a bookkeeping team that everyone can take advantage of that can afford to provide and the color station because that color station right there probably had like 20 30 40 50 thousand dollars worth of product just in that color station and we with barbershops you get capped as a business owner it's hard to grow it's hard to market you see a lot of salons with billboards you see salons doing commercials and stuff i would challenge barbershops to start looking at consider that idea you know consider opening a barbershop that charges 40 50 60 dollars for a cut and do a commission system where your barbers are still making 25 30 dollars on those cuts they're happy you're making more money than you would be doing booth rent you got the revenues to come in to really grow the business in a substantial way but you don't really see barbershops that have facilities like that you just don't see it because the revenues don't really come in into a barbershop like that when you're doing something like that you got 28 stations like you're not going to put a million dollars into a project to make booth rent but in a commission system where the revenues make sense that does make sense it's just really hard to find people in the barber industry to think like people in the salon industry it's a big challenge we've tried it trust me in the tier system you can work your way up right you can become tier two where the commission split 60 40 where you get 60 tier three is 70 30 where you get 70 i've even heard of higher tiers where salons offer you're going to be 70 30 but there is a cutoff so the most that i can charge you is 300 dollars, for example or 400 dollars. now when you reach those tiers yeah you you pay a lot less in commission and you make a lot more money but you have more responsibilities when we have a new stylist coming in at that hourly rate i need you to train them they're going to shadow you you got to help them and then you can work your way up to partnership if they want to expand to multiple locations that's how the revenues are made plus product sales they also care about selling product a barbershop can sell a lot of product too like pomades and clays and beard oils and stuff like that we just don't take the time to educate our clients our clients end up going to amazon looking at reviews instead of looking to their barber yeah man i think this is dope and i hope you guys like this video i try to add some nuggets to it wishing everybody so much luck in 2021 and so much prosperity and success and if you want to open a business man go for it guys go for it love ya as always we do daily content here tomorrow i'm gonna drop a vlog we'll be picking the giveaway winner tomorrow tomorrow in that vlog so don't miss out let's see if you won the shaver the uno shaver don't miss it let's see if you guys won love you guys i'll see you tomorrow with daily content we drop make sure you subscribe see y'all later